your daily how-to. And if you were with me yesterday, uh, you, uh, I gave you a little bit of a heads up of what I would be showing. I said we're going to be working with mesh today. So I have a fun little project working with mesh. Mesh is something you don't want to use for a mask. <laughs> I crack myself up. Okay, <laughs> it is see-through. There are holes, not quite mask material. Okay, but I will tell you what it's great for. And there's so many fun colors. I'm gonna be using the lightweight mesh fabric uh, by Annie. And you know she has it in 14 different colors. 14, my friends. I mean, so many fun colors. We've got all the colors. And what do people use mesh bags for? Well, they a lot of times you'll want to use them for groceries or for being able to do, uh, like if you're at a farmer's market or collecting um, items from your garden, whatever it might be like that, they use mesh bags. A lot of people use them for swimsuits, uh, flip-flops, all of your beach accessories. Um, you know, there's so many great things that you can use mesh bags for, even for laundering if you're wanting to launder um, unmentionables or you know something like that then you might want to put it in a mesh bag so that is uh, just a few ideas of what you can use mesh bags with so I just made up a really simple simple uh, tutorial on how to make a mesh bag okay and this is what it ends up looking like it's got uh, a fun fabric top along the top look how cute that that green gingham is ah can we take a moment of silence for the green gingham? Absolutely love it. And then it's mesh all the way, the rest of the way down. And then I'm gonna show you how to make the drawstring closure, okay? But I'm actually gonna take this one out. I didn't tie it on purpose because I'm gonna show you that as part of my tutorial on how to make that ribbon go through really easy. So here's what you'll need. To do um, a mesh tote that I'm gonna share, Oh, Deborah says pool toys. Great, 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 great. Swimsuits, yes. Um, one bag, one, one little bag of mesh fabric will make two mesh bags, if you're gonna make them the size I did, okay? So one bag is going to make two projects, all right? Uh, of course, you can make it any size you want, and the technique is the same no matter what size you make it. So when it comes out of the bag, there will it will automatically be, be folded in half. And what I do is I just cut it right on that fold so that I am now given a piece that is, let me see real quick, this is 18 by 28. 18 by 28 so in the package it comes as an 18 by 54 so that's why I say I cut it just directly in half and now I have enough for two bags okay so 18 by 28 is what I have it at and then I'm going to use a fun coordinating piece of fabric so like I said the green gingham was one I used on this one but then oh my goodness I thought oh I've got to do one out of Kimberbell Vintage Boardwalk. Am I right or am I right? Like really, honestly. You're, you gotta die over the cute vintage swimsuits, right? So if I'm gonna make this as a pool bag, then I, I wanna have the cute vintage swimsuits. So what you'll want per bag is one quarter yard one quarter yard. Now if you're looking for this fabric or any of the other vintage boardwalk fabric, we do have it all online and you you can purchase it in half yard increments, so which is perfect because now two of these make a half yard. One of these makes two, so you need a half yard with one package and you can make two bags. Hopefully that made sense to all of you. So, vintage boardwalk, so stinking cute. So this is cut at a fourth of yard, which is nine inches. Now, I subcut it to be 28 inches. Why? Because this is 28 inches long. Okay, so this is 18 by 28, and this is nine by 28. So, how 
am I going to make this all come together? Well, for those of you who have followed with me before on how to make a pillowcase, a burrito pillowcase, you're in luck because that's exactly how I'm going to do this mesh bag. What that allows is for you to have fabric on both the outside and the inside with no raw edges along the top. Pretty cool, right? So for those of you who know how to make a pillowcase, then you guys are, you're set. You know, you're ready to rock and roll. But if you don't know, or if you want to review, let me show you how to do that. All right, so I'm gonna just bring my camera right over here, just down below, and let me, let's see. I know sometimes I have to get this little guy out of the way, so I'm gonna make him a little bit smaller. All righty. So what you'll do is you take your quarter yard piece, this is the nine inches by 28 inches. Pull this over here. And you're going to lay it in front of you with the right side facing up. Right side facing up. Then I take my mesh fabric, which is 18 by 50, no, excuse me, 18 by 28. And I put it directly on top. Now there's no right or wrong side to mesh fabric. So it doesn't matter what direction is facing but that goes directly on top and my raw edges are aligned right here okay and then just like I do with a regular pillowcase I'm going to take my mesh fabric from down below and I'm going to roll it up over the top take a look there you see how I'm just rolling it towards the top of my fabric okay and I've seen this piece now peeking out from the bottom, so now it's okay for me to take the bottom of it, and I'm going to just bring it over top just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna do it again real quickly, one more time, make sure we're all on the same page. Again, my nine inches by 28 is right side up. I'm gonna place my mesh fabric, which is 18 by 28 right just put it right on top of that take it from the bottom roll it up like this and now that this is peeking down from underneath I can now roll it over top pretty simple right and now what I'll do is just pin all my layers along the top this is really important especially because you're using mesh fabric it kind of can get a little squirrely on you, so I don't recommend you try doing this without pinning. All right. So just place a pin every, oh, every couple inches, and you'll be good to go. Okay. So while I'm doing that, are there any questions so far? Let me go here. Mm -hmm. Oh, let's see. Renee says to hold children's socks in the washing machine so the pairs stay together. Oh my goodness, that is a great idea. You know, <laughs> that reminds me. Growing up, we would have every like six months, it would be a twice a year theme. <laughs> we would have what was called the Sock Olympics at home. And the Sock Olympics meant... <laughs> that on your mark, get set, go, you had to run around the house and try and collect any pair of socks that were somewhat lost. So don't ask me how this happens, but it's just a phenomenon that happens. They can be found any place in the closets, in drawers without matching pairs, in underneath beds. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? So we would have the Sock Olympics twice a year it was it was an it was a biannual event. It was very exciting stuff in the Shelley household. My maiden name is Shelley, and um, <laughs> and we would have to we would see who which child could get the the most number of pairs of socks, and there was big rewards. I'm sure I don't even remember what the rewards were, but I remember the sock Olympics. That's for sure. Are we good? See how easy that was? So now I'm going to take it to the sewing machine and sew right along there. 
So let me bring you over to the Baby Lock Presto. Let me bring this computer right over here. There we go. This is the Baby Lock Presto machine. And by the way, this is a machine that we can sell online if you're looking for a new machine. Maybe this might be the one you want. All right, and the price on it is $599. So we have it online. You can, um, I'm just gonna move my seam allowance over here. Uh, you can purchase this online. It has a scissor feature, which I absolutely love. And it's a nice, nice machine. I love it for $599. That ain't bad at all. All right, so what I'm going to do is I set my seam allowance to be a quarter inch and I'm going to use the presser foot as my guide so I just moved my needle uh, position over to make it a quarter inch. Now the other thing that's really important when sewing mesh, get right down here and talk to you, <laughs> there we go. the other thing that's important about sewing mesh is shorten your stitch length, okay? Don't forget, shorten your stitch length. All right. So I'm going to shorten mine, your, uh, it's normally at a 2.5 is your, your default. I'm going to actually take it down to a 1.6 because if you think about it, you've got lots of holes there and we want smaller stitches going in. And I'll do a back stitch and I'm going to just sew. Easy peasy. Okay, and I'll do a little back stitch there. Cut my threads, and voila, there we go. All right, any questions? Mm -hmm. Oh, Marianne says, this would be nice to give to someone to wash their masks in. Helps those long ties not to get tangled. That is an excellent idea, Marianne. I love that. Okay, so there you have it. This is how you would normally do a pillowcase, but we're gonna do a mesh bag out of it. So now that that tube has been sewn, all I do is I feel like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat <laughs> when I do this. But yes, certainly you are gonna pull the rabbit per se out of the tube. Do you like that part? Clever. Thank you. This is my 4 a.m. thought. She says, that's clever. Barb's here like with me. It. And yeah, I was trying to think of a way to make those seams enclosed. So there you have it. There you have it. It's it's fully enclosed. You have no raw edges there along the seams. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to press it, give it a nice little press. So I'll take you over to my ironing station here and do that just that. And you want to press away from the mesh. You do want to be careful with mesh because, well, it's it is polyester, so it's it's not it's not like it's going to burn like if it were nylon. That would be more of a problem. But I still like to be careful with it. Okay, so I just press that. Give it a nice good press. I might even consider putting steam in that if I had water in there. There we go. Okay. So now that you have this made, all you have to do is fold it in half this way and take a look. That bag is already beginning to form. So I will sew all the way down here and sew all the way across. However, I do need to do something really important before I do that and that is I need to create a casing for my drawstring okay I want a, a casing for my drawstring so there's a few different ways you can do it but I'm gonna this is the way I like to do it I like to first run 
uh, about a top stitch about a quarter inch approximately from the very top okay so a quarter inch across for the top I'm going to add a top stitch and then whatever size my drawstring is going to be is what I will then go to the next um, the next sew line to do so let me give you an example I'm going to use this cute orange polka dot ribbon is that going to be so adorable or what oh my gosh I'm so excited this is one inch so I'm actually going to sew my top line about a quarter inch from the top and I'm going to skip down to another about inch and a quarter so that it has plenty of room to move around I don't want it too tight and then um, I'll do it that way so let's take a look and see uh, someone asked Connie asked what kind of iron are you using I am using the steam fast iron this is a nice little portable iron so hi Terry good to see you my friend okay so are you ready come back over to the presto and I'm going to just run a top stitch right along there I'm just using the edge of my presser foot as my guide you know what I just realized I could I'll do that right now I'm going to actually lengthen that stitch a little bit to the normal length because I'm not sewing the mesh anymore so I can go back to a 2.5 just fine Okay, so I have my top stitch. Now, again, remember I'm using a one inch uh, ribbon for uh, the drawstring. So I want to measure about approximately an um, inch and a quarter, maybe an inch of an eighth. I just want a little bit more than an inch because I want to be able to give it some wiggle room. So I'll just find that right here on my, on uh, right here, inch and, yeah. I'll go about there, inch and a quarter, and just sew one more line. And there you have it. I know it's hard to see, but there are two lines of stitching here so that my casing is available. All right, so now that I've created my casing, all I need to do is fold this in half. Okay, fold this in half. And again, it really doesn't matter uh, which way you do it because it's gonna be the same on both sides. There's really no right or wrong way right now. I will sew just a little bit down uh, to where that first line is leave an opening because we need to leave an opening for the drawstring skip down to the second line and now sew the rest of the way so again remember because we're doing um, we're sewing on the mesh we're about to sew on the mesh I do want to take it down to a 1.6 I'm going to do a back stitch here cut my threads skip to the next line okay again leaving that opening uh, do a stitch do a little back stitch and now I'm going to go all the way down this is just one of the easiest projects you can do obviously you can see that from start to finish I'm able to make it in about 10 minutes really so so simple okay I'm gonna pivot and now go across the bottom and a back stitch cut my threads and I'm just about done. I'm done at least with the sewing part of it, right? So that's pretty much how easy it is. Uh, let's see. Turn the swimsuit so they are up. Yeah, it will be 
Oh, I should have done that. Oh, well. <laughs> yeah, you want to pay attention to the direction here. They're upside down. But you know, if you think about it, when you look down, they're right side up. <laughs> uh, yeah, I should have paid attention to that. <laughs> you could certainly search the seam as well. You could go back and do a zigzag stitch if you wanted to. Again, you just want it to be a really tight stitch. Okay, so there you have it. There is the mesh bag. And now uh, to get the ribbon through, you could use um, like a safety pin, but one of the tools that I absolutely love is the drawstring threader. This is pretty, pretty awesome. It's got a couple different holes. These are on our website for like three bucks. They're so cheap. All right. And you just stick your, your um, thread through there, or your thread, your ribbon. And if you want it to make sure that it was really secure, you would stick it through both holes like that. So just like this, it's bendy. You could do a French seam inside. Yes, Irene. Irene asked if you could do a French seam inside. Absolutely. Um, to do that, oh, I could. Well, I won't take the time to do it right now. Uh, but what you could do is you would put uh, the wrong sides together, sew, and then bring the right sides together and sew over top of that, like just another eighth of an inch, and you would have a French seam. So yes, you definitely could do that. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're just going to take the dull edge and just poke it through um, the opening that you left. And of course, because I'm doing this in front of all of you, like I can't seem to get my grip here. <laughs> there we go, <laughs> there we go. See how it just goes in like that? And now I just pull this all the way through and it's pretty, pretty simple. Let's see, just seeing if I have any questions out there. Yep, French seam would work really awesome. Okay. There we go. See it on the other end? And I just pull this through. I'll tell you, this is so slick. Like I said, a safety pin will work it as well, but if you like to do lots of these drawstring kinds of things, then having this nifty little tool that's like $3 is, is pretty handy. Okay. There you have it. So easy, so fun. What other questions do we have? <laughs> Joanne says, get a grip, Chris. <laughs> I know, seriously, my friend. Seriously, sometimes, some days I wonder. Some days I wonder. There we go. What is that thing called again to thread the ribbons? This is called the, um, I have it on the website. I can't remember what they call it. Oh, drawstring threader, drawstring threader. Here it is. There we go, drawstring threader. That's what it is. Ta-da. And now my drawstring is through. I can undo this. Look how fun this is. Yeah, for those of you who like to do lots of drawstring things, or let me tell you, if you've ever had a drawstring cord uh, get loose from your, even from your hoodie, comes out of the washing machine, and the hoodie no longer has your drawstring in it, this, my friends, is a lifesaver. So look how cute this is. That's as simple as it gets my friends by the way i used uh just a little over a yard of ribbon for this so you want it to be able to open it up all the way Ta -da! and then i like to actually tie a knot at both ends so that it doesn't go through by accident through the casing like that and then when i'm ready to pull it up there we have it. Q 
cute, right? So easy and simple and fun. There you go. I mean, it, it just doesn't get any simpler. Now, of course, there's other fancy ones you could do where you buy a pattern, but there's your pattern, my friends. It's really easy to do. But they do have, we have some cute ones. This is a cute one by Annie called Meshing Around Drawstring Backpacks. And this is where they have something at the top as well as on the, on the bottom. So that's an idea. You could do it that way if you want to get fancier. But let me tell you, this is, I mean, it just doesn't get any easier, right? So fun. Okay, so that is your tutorial today. I hope you enjoyed it. Let's see. Um, mm -hmm. Tanya says, where can I watch these videos later on? They are always, they, they stay forever and ever and ever on our Facebook page, as well as we do tr end up transferring them over to our YouTube channel as well. Um, but yeah, on our Facebook page, you can find it. And to find them really easy, all you have to do is go to my girlfriend's quilt shop on Facebook. On the left-hand side, there will be a thing that says videos and you click on videos and you'll have them all right there in the order that they appear. So hopefully that will help. All right, oh, you guys are so welcome. You are so welcome. I'm, I'm happy, I'm so glad you liked, liked the little tutorial today. Kind of fun, gets us thinking about summer.